So you got sick a while ago, and now you're feeling a little bit better. You feel the need to get back to whatever you put on hold ASAP because the guilt of not being productive has been consuming you. But something's holding you back. You're procrastinating over what you should do. What do you do about that? How do you get back on track without overwhelming yourself? Hey beautiful soul, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Alice, aka Breathing Magic. I haven't been posting as frequently as I would have liked to these past few months. It's mainly because I needed to heal and recover from the side effects of my vaccine. In this video, I'm going to talk about what happened and share with you five tips that have been helping me get better and get back on track. The timestamps for this video will be in the description box below. And make sure you watch till the end because I'll be sharing a bonus tip related to time blocking. I got my first vaccine shot back in October 2021. The side effects I experienced were a fever and this pain that felt like someone had taken a needle and sewn threads from joint to joint. The fever lasted about 4-5 to five days but the pain went on for over a week. During this time, I found it very hard to sleep at night because I felt like the wind was blowing directly into my bones and I couldn't do anything that required a lot of physical strength. So I spent a lot of time lying down, contemplating life. There were some things that helped ease the pain, which I'll share in a bit. At the end of November, I got my second vaccine shot. I thought I was going to experience similar side effects, but what happened was completely different. I started to feel this constant strain in my heart area, and this thing that felt like the shadow of something more serious. One December morning, I woke up from a nightmare, which I later on learned was my mind's way of saying, wake up, there's something wrong with your body. I woke up to this huge, throbbing pain in my heart, and I felt like I was having a heart attack. So I went to see a doctor, he did some tests and gave me some medicine. However, I still constantly felt that strain, sting, or throb in my heart. And I had to cancel almost all of my YouTube related activities because I couldn't even set up my equipment or raise my voice and talk in front of my camera without feeling that strain. I still have to go to a bigger hospital for regular checkups, but I'm feeling much better now. Hopefully, I'll be able to make videos more often in the near future. This whole experience was really uncomfortable to say the least, but I believe part of it was actually a blessing in disguise because it put a lot of things into perspective and made me rethink my priorities. A lot of the things that used to be a big deal suddenly don't matter as much or matter at all anymore. This inspired me to reimagine how I want to live my life and make some changes. And here are five tips that have been helping me heal and gradually get back on track. Tip one, stay warm and hydrated. Keeping your body warm helps boost your immune response. According to a research conducted at Yale University, warmer body temperatures help prevent the cold virus from spreading. There are many ways to warm up your body. You can move your body. There's a reason your body naturally shivers when it's really cold. When you shiver, your muscles tighten and relax in rapid succession, generating heat. Another thing you can do is wear warm clothes. You can wear a hat, a scarf, a sweater, a pair of socks, etc. You can also add an extra blanket when you sleep. When I was going through the side effects of my first vaccine shot, I noticed that whenever I had an extra jacket, sweater, or whenever I used an extra blanket, the pain was less intense. And as for hydration, I'm sure you're already aware that about 60% of the human body is made of water. Being sick can often result in the loss of fluids. Things like sweating from a fever or having a running nose can lead to dehydration if you don't replenish that loss. And sufficient amounts of fluids are also necessary for your blood flow, which brings oxygen and nutrients to your vital organs. That's why doctors often tell you to drink lots of fluids. Drinking water, hot drinks, and soups can help you stay hydrated. Tip 2. Be kind to yourself. Be your own BFF and have self-compassion. Instead of dwelling on self-criticism, choose to listen to your heart 
and pay close attention to what your body is trying to tell you. Do your best, but always remember to take breaks when you need them. Pace yourself and let go of the need to understand everything or complete everything in one go. Allow yourself to tackle things and live life one step at a time. Do not rush into things. Practice the art of going slow to go fast. What I mean is do your best to stay calm and do things with a gentle awareness. It'll make you more present and you'll start to notice that things actually get done quicker and with less stress. Tip three, get everything down on paper. Do a brain dump and prioritize your tasks. We all have a great number of thoughts floating around in our minds and a variety of tasks waiting to be done. If we're not careful, these things can get blown out of proportion by our imagination and lead to anxiety, procrastination, frustration, and even a sense of guilt. A good way to free up your headspace is doing a brain dump. Take out a piece of paper and write down everything on your mind and everything you think you should do or want to do. Don't filter your thoughts. Write everything down. And while you're doing so, imagine yourself transferring everything that's been weighing you down onto that piece of paper. Once you have everything down on paper, it'll be easier for you to see your tasks for what they are and prioritize things that align with your goal. If you're still not sure what to do or how to do it, try this. Take some inspiration from someone you look up to or aspire to be like. Ask yourself, what would that person do? For example, when I want to do something but I think people are going to think I'm weird and I face a bit of self-doubt, I think of Freddie Mercury. He really inspires me to stay true to my heart and be my most authentic self. And there's something very important you should keep in mind when it comes to prioritizing your tasks. You get to decide what's important to you. Handle your responsibilities, but set healthy boundaries so that other people's emergencies don't automatically become your priority. Not everything has to be done right this moment, and not everything has to be done by you. Tip 4. Define what work-life balance means to you. Maybe grinding, working nonstop, and ignoring your mental, emotional, or physical well-being were the reasons you got sick in the first place. If that's the case, wouldn't you agree it's time to embrace a new lifestyle? Start to gain clarity on what work-life balance looks like to you. Visualize the kind of lifestyle you desire and ask yourself, what can I do with what I already have in place to sync, to align with that dream lifestyle, and start taking action to live that kind of lifestyle. Hey, if you've been getting value out of this video so far, give me a like, and remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Tip five, celebrate small wins. Give yourself a pat on the back for each task you complete, no matter the size of it. A baby step forward is still a step forward. Continue to encourage and root for yourself. This will make your overall attitude more positive, improve your self-image, and motivate you to keep moving forward. So be your own cheerleader. These tips have been helping me get back on track and make shifts to align with my dream lifestyle. And here's a bonus tip. When it comes to productivity or getting things done, people often focus on planning projects or blocking out time to do things but tend to forget the importance of sufficient rest. I suggest blocking out time and making space for rest first, and being flexible enough to allow yourself to take breaks or power naps. And rest doesn't always mean sleep. For those who feel drained by work they don't enjoy, rest could simply mean the chance to immerse in something that inspires them or reignites their passion. Sometimes when I study and feel information overload, I take a break and play Animal Crossing. I go fishing, I chop trees, I breathe flowers, and I make a good fortune selling fossils. I find it really relaxing. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, share it with a friend who might need it. And if you're still feeling overwhelmed by your to-do list, here's an extra tip. Consider tidying your living space and workspace. This is because your outer environment is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of you. 
I have a video where I talked about Marie Kondo and insights I gained from her book, The Life-Changing Art of Tidying Up. I'll put the link to that video in the description box below. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in my next video. Until then, live from your heart and be the magic you wish to see in this world. Bye!